Whether you need new casters and wheels or replacements, selecting the right ones can be challenging. This Hamilton Academy video provides a basic introduction to casters to simplify selection, specifying, and ordering. It is a crash course in the fundamentals. I'll explain basic terminology and critical measurements as well as ergonomic and performance considerations. First, there are two types of casters, swivel and rigid. Swivel casters swivel to allow for full rotation and rolling in any direction. Rigid casters, or fixed casters, only roll back and forth in a straight path. Rigid casters, in conjunction with swivel casters, provide greater steering control. Next, the caster assembly minus the wheel is called a rig. This middle assembly is the horn, also called the yoke or fork. It is a bracket with a base and legs. At the top is the mounting plate, usually containing bolt holes for fastening it to equipment. And at the bottom of the legs are the axle and wheel. The caster will be mounted to something, so it's important to know the pattern and spacing of the bolt holes on the mounting plate. For the bolt center measurements, measure the distance between the bolt hole centers. Hamilton stocks all of the most common sizes of mounting plates with the most common bolt hole patterns. Contact customer support if you need assistance measuring or identifying the bolt hole patterns for your application. The most basic caster specification is the wheel diameter. Most in the industry describe a caster using the wheel diameter as the primary measurement. This is an 8 inch caster. An 8-inch caster is a caster with an 8-inch diameter wheel. Wheel diameter is very different from the overall height of the caster, which is the top of the caster to the bottom of the wheel. There are a number of factors to consider when assessing the performance requirements of the application. The purpose of using casters is to make heavy loads easier to move. The easier it is to move, the easier it is on the worker moving the load. This is rollability, and it is an important ergonomic factor to consider. Another consideration for caster selection is the maximum load capacity. As a general rule, always select a caster and wheel that is rated for a capacity greater than the calculated load per caster. Another factor in caster selection is shock loading. Shock or impact loading occurs when a load is quickly dropped onto a cart or trailer. A shock also happens when a cart or trailer hits a bump or joint in the floor. The dynamic forces absorbed by the caster can be nearly three times greater than the load on the cart. The application's operating environment should be evaluated when choosing a caster. Is there debris on the floor or excessive dust in the air? Is it a corrosive environment? Will it be exposed to high or low temps or perhaps a washdown application? And finally, the rolling surface conditions are an important consideration. Poor floor conditions can cause a caster or wheel to fail, but the type of wheels used on the caster can also affect the floors. We discuss wheels in a separate video, but floor conditions are often an important factor in the selection process. This Hamilton Academy video provided only a basic introduction to casters. For assistance, or to learn more about the caster selection process, visit hamiltoncaster.com.